Welcome back. As we head into hour two, it is a privilege to bring back Dr. Zudi Jasser. He um, he's a longtime friend of mine and friend of this show. He has guest hosted it any number of times. He came in regularly, weekly during COVID to walk us through all of that. He is um, also now delightfully uh, happy to say running for Congress to unseat Greg Stanton in Congressional District 4. You can follow him on Twitter X, um, Twitter uh, X or Twix at DRZ for AZ. That's Dr. Z for AZ. You can go to his website, Z for AZ dot com. Never in my memory have we had a more qualified person running for Congress. It's just a delight to know you, Dr. Jasser. Welcome to the show. On the occasion of today, you releasing your securing our border plan, your eight-point border security plan. That was a big buildup. Sorry. Welcome. (laughs) It's great to be with you, Lee. Thanks for having me. You betcha. Um, I want to talk about your eight-point plan, but it would be conspicuous or an affectation not to ask you a... um, former uh, lieutenant commander in the Navy, about um, these three soldiers that were killed in Jordan, on top of two SEALs who lost their lives uh, protecting against illegal Iranian arms shipments in the Gulf of Aden. Any thoughts you have on what's going on with this administration and Iran's muscle flexing? Yeah, you know, it breaks my heart, as it does every American, to see uh, the loss of any life, uh, let alone the loss at the uh, undeterred nature that Iran continues to use its proxies to, to threaten us, to flex their muscles. And, you know, prayers and strength to the families of our troops that uh, have given the ultimate sacrifice. And, uh, you know, these uh, Iranian proxies, if you will, uh, they're sending drones. Uh, we still need to find out how they got past our airspace and, and the troops that were there at the Jordanian-Syrian border. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is um, – it, it should awaken every American that, you know, the, the left likes to perceive themselves as the party of peace, and they claim that the hawks are on the right. And yet it seems that all the wars seem to begin – uh, with weakness seem to begin the way you prevent wars is by deterring it, and there is no deterrent. So the Biden administration, despite what comes out of their mouth, are, are leading us to war because they're not preventing it. And uh, how many troops do we need to lose from Afghanistan? Lost uh, uh, 13 as they uh, fecklessly pulled out, and uh, we continue to be peppered with the threats from Iran. And they're sending messages, which is uh, not only because of what's happening uh, in the just war against Hamas um, by, Isra- by Israel, but also the fact that this was on the Syrian border and and uh, in the region, we, we are completely missing in action. So uh, stand by, unfortunately, probably for more to come. Okay, doctor, thank you. Um, let's talk about your border security plan. You released an eight-point plan today. People can access it at Z for AZ. Dot com. Before I get into it uh, a little bit, let me just preface it related to the previous question, because a lot of my listeners, a lot of our, 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 our listeners wonder about just you being an expert in radical Islam, your thoughts about the openness of our border subjecting us to the possibility of attack from within by people who came in through the border. How serious a threat is your assessment of that? Boy, I mean, you know, it doesn't take uh, anyone uh, anyone who's paying attention to the news will we'll hear our own FBI say that we're at the largest threat we've had in decades because of Hamas, because of the Islamists, because of folks wanting to, to join in the jihad. And uh, even reports from uh, the far-left New York Times say that there's been 169 people that have come through on the terror watch list, which are, which are knowns let alone the the unknowns that are coming through. And that's why my plan is so important. You know, I can tell you as a primary care doc, I'm used to quarterbacking patients with problems Mm -hmm. and and prioritizing them. And I can tell you as a candidate for Congress that cares about uh, my district, that cares about our state, 
that the priority one, two, and three is going to be the border. And it needs a comprehensive plan. It can't just be, oh, you know, one point, which is we need to seal the border. There needs to be intensified vetting for, for national security. There needs to be reclaiming of congressional constitutional authority that uh, we've handed over to the executive branch that clearly shows that the likes of Mearkis, who, who needs to be impeached, uh, but uh, completely have not been doing what they should be under the um, leadership that they have been given. We need to require asylum claims to be made outside the U.S. We need to deport Biden's illegals, let alone all the ones that came in before under the Obama administration. Um, and also, you know, one of the things I think that we forget as part of a plan is the bully pulpit of Congress and of the White House and our political leaders to let the world know that we are going to not have lawlessness and a tidal wave of humanity coming through the border, but rather we're going to enforce our laws and uh, that people are only welcome who come through here legally. And that would have a huge effect on changing the pouring. It's not a coincidence that it's the same Border Patrol that President Trump had. There was no big change in the Border Patrol, but the bottom line is, is his bully pulpit was telling the world you can't just flow into here, and it was probably 80, 90 percent less than what we're seeing now. So all of these things should be done at once, or we don't have a border and we don't have a nation. Well said, Dr. Z- Dr. Jasser. Zudi Jasser is my guest. Z-U-H-D-I is his first name. Jasser, J-A-S-S-E-R, running in Congressional District 4 to unseat Greg Stanton. His eight-point border security plan released today, very comprehensive, very smart, probably one of the smartest plans out there, if not the smartest. It starts with sealing the border, um, obviously. Um, that goes without saying, I think, for most common-sense-minded people, I love that you talk about reclaiming congressional constitutional authority. Congress has turned over way too much power, delegated way too much of its constitutional power to outside of itself, for example, to the executive. Point three of eight is kind of interesting, and and you don't hear a lot of people talking about it. You went there. You go where others uh, are afraid to, uh, which is uh, part of your courage that I admire so much. Talk to us about this, the intensifying of vetting. Well, the bottom line is is that not only are they walking across, but the ones that uh, finally get some type of adjudication um, are not being vetted. When, when we've, we've got laws on the books that basically talk about what are the reasons people should be able to come to the United States. And it's primary. It's not economic. It's, it's asylum. It's about whether they truly believe in our social contract. And, and whether they are, are leaving persecution. All of these things are, are part of the vetting uh, that needs to be done. But again, what, and I've testified to Congress about this issue, which is it's not just about belonging to terror groups where they have a list of an alphabet soup of thousands of groups across the world. That's not even the, the, the tip of the iceberg. The underlying part of that iceberg is ideology. And studies in Europe, for example, showed that 10 to 20 percent of humanity coming from Syria, where my family's from, and and elsewhere in the Middle East into Europe, believed in sympathy for ISIS, for radical Islam. They didn't belong to ISIS, so they're not going to pop up on red flags, but if they were being vetted appropriately, ideologically, and we should have some type of ideological vetting. And I'm not afraid to talk about that because my parents came here, my family came here because they believed in America's social contract. And I can tell you, having worked with cases with with, uh, uh, teens and others that are radicalized. Uh, Their parents radicalized them because they didn't believe in America's system. They were anti-Semitic. They were, uh, uh, in many ways, believers in conspiracy theories. And there's tons of clear uh, symptoms of folks that really would come here to harm us. I mean, heck, we have a a, a woman in Congress right now who two days ago was talking about believing in Somalia, uh, Somalia security more than anywhere else. And this is because I don't believe she was vetted appropriately when she came and her family. It's an incredible Ilan statement, Omar. the Ilan Omar thing. Uh, by the way, uh, what's your schedule like? Do you have time for one more segment or do you have to rush? Yeah. Uh, because Absolutely. I'm going into a break. I would like to talk to you about the Ilan Omar statement uh, that she made. 
boy, talk about dual loyalty. She's very easy to throw around dual loyalty charges. Boy, she told us, I don't even know if it's dual loyalty. <laughs> it seems like Somalia first for her. Zudi Jasser is our guest. He put out an eight-point border security plan. Very smart, very comprehensive, starting with sealing the border, but then going a lot deeper and a lot further. You can read it at his website, z 4 az Dot com. You can follow him on Twitter, X, what we call Twix. Uh, we kind of make a portmanteau there, yeah. Uh, portmanteau word out of it. Dr. Z for AZ. And he and I will be right back. Welcome back to the Seth Liebson Show. Dr. Zudi Jasser is my guest, candidate for Congress in Arizona's uh, Congressional District 4, running to unseat Greg Stanton. What a great man and great candidate. Regular listeners to this show uh, don't need my telling them that. They already know that of Zudi. New listeners, uh, check him out at Z4AZ.com. You can help his candidacy out there as well, help contribute to it. Uh, Dr. Jasser put out an eight-point border security plan today, comprehensive, smart. It begins, of course, with sealing the border, but then goes much, much further, including going to the issues of how to deal with asylum claims, um, how to deport the illegals, how to increase self-deportation, how to end sanctuary cities, all of that. Before we return to it, Dr. Jasser, you made reference to the speech Ilan Omar gave uh, over the weekend in Minnesota, holy smokes, talking about uh, the U.S. government will do what we tell the U.S. government to do, um, and talking about her loyalty being to Somalia. Um, it's really incredible what she said there. And it's, you know, something she's been able to get away with for years is kind of the gaslighting of people who disagree with her by saying they're racist, they're bigots. Just having you in Congress in and of itself to counter her would be worth all the effort. I mean, someone like you needs to stop her in her tracks, doctor. Oh, I can't tell you how much I would love to do that because I could immediately take away the the identity politic card and and, and show that her as, as an emperor, she not only has no clothes, she's a complete fraud and uh, she hates this country. She stood in an audience in Minneapolis speaking in a Somali language. And thanks to, by the way, the foreign minister uh, um, from Somalia that uh, is an ambassador um, that uh, posted it and posted a translation. Yeah. So basically she told the group, uh, together we will protect the interests of Somalia. You can sleep in comfort knowing that I'm here to protect yep. the interests Incredible. of Somalia from within Incredible. the U.S. system. Incredible. I mean, as a naval officer... The, these members of Congress think the same oath I did, which yeah. was that they will protect this country and defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. Yeah, this country. If that's true. <laughs> yeah, this country, right. This, this country, country right. exactly. Yes. Yeah. She stood in Minneapolis in her district, near her district, basically saying that she was going to take the interests of Somalia, that she was actually in Congress to help Somalia yeah. more than she was for anything else. Yeah. I mean, if that... If we were, if this was a normal political period, this would be a scandal that we would be talking about on every news channel. That a member of Congress was talking about some foreign country as being a primary interest, and yet nobody's paying attention to it, especially on the left. It's, it's Incredible! Absurd. Yeah, she literally says the U.S. government will not support others to take what's ours. Ours, <laughs> ours. What what country is she? Um, is she representing? Well, she made it very clear in that speech. I think it was on Saturday, as you point out. Just to have you there to counter her would be enough. But you are so um, well-versed on so many things, given your work last two decades on radical Islam, of course, in medicine, health care. And, uh, gosh, you were so great with us during COVID. Our audience thanks you so much for being commonsensical and working to keep businesses open, Dr. Jasser. People forget that. Um, it was only a few years ago. But the thing that you don't want open is our border. So you put out this eight-point plan. It's fantastic. Talk to us a little bit about self-deportation and deportation. It's a high order, but I'm glad you're talking about it. A tall order, but I'm glad you're talking about it. Yeah, you know, I, I think ultimately if we start enforcing laws uh, more strictly and as they're written on the books, uh, you know, ultimately, while much of the policy, you know, that's governing illegal immigrants is state to state, ultimately, 
they will self-deport if they know that they're going to be held accountable uh, for trying to work, whether it's mandating E-Verify or prohibiting, uh, you know, certain IDs or prohibiting certain rights. I mean, California is going to be giving them health insurance. So that's the opposite of what I'm talking about, which is if they know they will not get free benefits paid for by real taxpayers who are paying into the system, then they will self-deport because they won't have a viable economic way to succeed in this country, which is many of our families that are, and I'm not anti-immigration, anyone who reads this will know that we as Americans are pro-immigration, but legal immigration. Yeah. And the first thing we do is stop the hemorrhaging, stop the tidal wave, seal the border, but also start enforcing laws so that they self-deport and, and especially end the sanctuary cities, which also prevent self-deportation because they think they can have sanctuaries of uh, a crime that they can commit. And then ultimately, once we start telling the world that that's what we're doing, you're not going to find it's not it's not about Mexico. Most of the migrants coming across are from Bangladesh, Pakistan, China, all over the world, because the, the, the word is out that uh, everybody and their brother can come to the United States. Oh, my friends, the Gillen Waters took me down to Lukeville, me and uh, another mutual friend of ours, uh, yours and mine, Ethan. We went down to Lukeville uh, per the Gillen Waters, and, uh, boy, they interviewed a guy. It, what, he was from West Africa, I think it was, and he said, no, we're here because Biden invited us. They're, they're not. I mean, he was one of the few that could speak English. But when he spoke English, it was perfectly clear why they were here. They were invited. And and I can't tell you how true that is. I've talked to friends in the IT industry and elsewhere, and they'll say, yeah, there's programmers coming from India and uh, all over the <laughs> all over the world. I can't yeah. find jobs. So they're finding yeah. an easy way to come in. And yeah. once they get in, yeah. it's no longer it's no longer a uh, uh, a problem. And, and this is the issue is just as Ronald Reagan said, you know, the evil empire, um, you know, as, as Natan Sharansky said, he knew that there was clarity as soon as Ronald Reagan called him the evil empire. Yeah. As soon as we have a president yeah. in the White House, just right. like President Trump, that yeah. ultimately called a spade a spade and said, you can't come here unless you're going to be held accountable to the laws that we have, and you're going to claim asylum before you come into the yep. U.S., not after. Yep. And that will change the spigot that's happening right now. And we need to put an end to this nonsense of uh, this, this, this use of asylum for, for, for anything but true asylum. I mean, no one needs to give you a lecture on what asylum is, but the fact is this word has been so very abused, hasn't it? It has. I mean, truly, you see people that uh, are, are victims of persecuted from dictatorships and, and people who have escaped North Korea, right. that have escaped China. Right. That's, That's, we need to yes. hear those stories. Yes. But the, the vast majority come in want to actually destroy us from within. They want to exploit the system. They, they, they don't care about America as, an, as a concept, as an idea, as our founding fathers created. No, they just are coming here to exploit a administration uh, the, I don't think they're explaining the administration. The administration wants to destroy this country. I think that's what the left is about. That's what Biden administration is about. It's an intentional, and that's why Mayorkas needs to be impeached. It's an intentional uh, uh, plan that they have to weaken the consciousness, if you will. There's a, there's a physical border in Mexico and U.S., and there's a consciousness border, which they have completely destroyed with globalism. Well, Dr. Jasser, Godspeed to you. And you know what? Thank you. You know, just thank you to have good people say, where are the good people running? Here is one. Here is a good person who is putting aside his daily work, putting his family uh, into this race with him because he has dedicated his life first with the Navy, then with everything else you've done to protect and defend this country and make it a better place. We're better for knowing you, Dr. Jasser. We can't wait for you to be in Congress. People can help out. Um, by going to your website, z4az.com. And, um, Doc, I, I just can't wait to see you again. Thank you for doing this. Anytime. Thanks, Seth, for having me. God Appreciate bless. it. You betcha. I'm Seth. We'll be right back.
need to yes. hear those stories. Yes. But the vast majority come in and want to actually destroy us from within. They want to exploit the system. They they, they don't care about America as an as a concept, as an idea, as our founding fathers created. No, they just are coming here to exploit a administration. Uh, that I don't think they're exploiting the administration. The administration wants to destroy this country. I think that's what the left is about. That's what Biden administration is about. It's an intentional, and that's why Mayorkas needs to be impeached. It's an intentional uh, uh, plan that they have to weaken the consciousness, if you will. There's a, there's a physical border in Mexico and U.S., and there's a consciousness border, which they have completely destroyed with globalism. Well, Dr. Jasser, Godspeed to you. And you know what? Thank you. You know, just thank you to have good people say, where are the good people running? Here is one. Here is a good person who is putting aside his daily work, putting his family uh, into this race with him because he has dedicated his life first with the Navy, then with everything else you've done to protect and defend this country and make it a better place. We're better for knowing you, Dr. Jasser. We can't wait for you to be in Congress. People can help out um, by going to your website, z4az.com. And, um, Doc, I, I just can't wait to see you again. Thank you for doing this. Anytime. Thanks, Seth, for having me. God Appreciate bless. it. You betcha. I'm Seth. We'll be right back.